So hello, and welcome back to another banknote video. My name is, well, Grimard D. And in today's videos, well, we're looking at some Singapore banknotes. And these are ones that I have for sale somewhere, but you will never know. Anyway, so the history of Singaporean banknotes was they first issued these in 1967. So here's the first one dollar that they issued. And... The actual flower is a, a Janelle Kiniali orchid. And as you can see, it looks quite beautiful. I have a, four of these banknotes. They all have the signature of, uh, what's his name? Hon So Sen. So these banknotes you can get with the red seal or without the red seal. And the interesting feature about Singapore is it has four official languages so we have malay tamil english and chinese uh, specifically mandarin but a lot of people do speak cantonese there so if you want to know which um when this was issued uh, the d series was issued uh, pretty much uh in the dying years of this banknote so Roughly around 1971, 72 period. So that's when this banknote was actually issued. Uh, I would say, yeah, probably around about 1972. So these are older than me. It had pinholes. And then we have the C, so 56 million. Another D. And I've seen that, obviously, the C series does come with or without the red one the blue um the d uh prefix and the number is usually have the uh have the seal on it so probably when they were printing they forgot to actually print the actual seal and on the back we just have apartment buildings so if you know anything about um asia specifically uh the build up areas uh, apartment buildings are pretty much where people live because singapore's got what five million people Something like that. Can't remember. Uh, I didn't look it up. I should look it up, but I'm just too lazy. Uh, anyway, so they build apartment buildings. Pretty efficient. Oh, a lot of Asian countries are like that. And let's look at the next one dollar banknote. So this is the one dollar banknote that was issued in the later series. So the second series was actually. This series, the birds, so 1976, this banknote was issued, and it was replaced. Do I have the actual? Yes, I do. Here we go. It was replaced by the ship series, and that occurred about 1984. So, and this banknote was replaced by a coin at a later time. I think 1986 or 87, they replaced it by a coin. Uh, which is the smaller one dollar I don't have any on the table, but I have I have quite a lot of them. They're still legal tender. Like these banknotes are still legal tender. And I have to say this banknote I have in my heart because this is one of the first banknotes I ever got from an overseas country. And it has a beautiful black nate turn. Obviously it has the name there, which is pretty good. It has the signature that was already on the original. So there you go, and as you can see, it has a clear part for the watermark, which is the lion. So once again, coat of arms, they have beautiful images, the background patterns, and on the reverse we have, I think that is Singapore Independence Day. So if, see, I use websites when I actually these videos because it actually helps in here national day parades independence day that's probably going past parliament house with a singer as part of the uh, see-through window so i actually quite like that banknote and you can see you printed it Bradbury wilkinson in the uk okay and then the next one yeah this one's all right it's probably has a little bit too much going on so I'm not too keen with the coat of arms being in the watermark. But it has a, a, a junk boat. Is that a junk boat? Oh, I'm not too familiar with ships because uh, 
Yeah, they're not my specialty. I'm not really that wrapped up into ships. But this one started from uh, this traditional boat. And then you got the $10,000, which has uh, a modern uh, cargo ship. So this is the Sash One Chinese junk trade ship. So that would have been one that went down into Malaysia and Indonesia. And as you can see, uh, the signatures Gong Ke Sui. And as far as I know, there's only been two signatures for this banknote, and I now have one of them. Once again, they have the red seal, which is derived from China anyway, that type of seal. And on the back, we have okay, Santosa Satellite Earth Station, and we have a plant. So it's probably, is it the same plant as that one? No, it's a different type of orchid. You can tell it's a different type of orchid if you're even just a little bit into plants. Once again, the watermark is a lion. Okay, we'll put those with those ones. And we'll go to the actual um, $2 banknote that I had before. Okay. Here we have the $2 banknote. So this has a Tong Kang. Looks like a traditional South Asian, uh, Southeast Asian uh, trade ship. It's quite big. Cargo ship, it could be even be a fishing vessel uh, that I'm not really interested in learning about. So, the $2 note was issued first in 1990 after they issued the $1 coin. So, they were one of just a, a space gap between the coin and the $5 note. So, the first one was orange, and this is the second issue. So the second issue was issued in uh, 92 to replace the orange one. And I'm not too sure what it replaced it. Probably it got confused with uh, another big note. Uh, probably the $10. So that's a reddish color, not an orange. But this bank note is actually quite good in that it has the sun, um, which focuses your eye on the actual sun, not the boat. When you first look at this banknote, you're probably more likely to focus on the sun. So this is a focal point, and that makes a good banknote. And on the back, we have uh, the Chinese Dragon Boat Festival. Tingay Procession. Tingay. So we've got the dragon being going through. And I think that represents... Uh, well, the dragon does represent Chinese imperialism or the royal family. Uh, but anyway, then we have the boat series. So this one is part of the $2 series. Obviously, it has a ship, but the design's a little bit different. It's more like uh, the actual bird series that, that uh, came before it. So that's very interesting. It's actually a... Standout banknotes, not like the other series. Uh, then we have the five dollar, so that has the tarkel. But when you look at this one, you're going to focus more on the actual dragon because the colors just pop out and they just are really interesting. So this one will probably cost you. Yeah, you can get these for like five to ten dollars in this condition. Uh, these ones here yeah, probably about two to three dollars each. Yeah. This one in this condition, yeah, probably five to ten dollars. I'll say this one's more like a ten dollar range. Then we have the ten dollar banknote. So this is Polari. Once again, it has oh, it has a phoenix, but the colours just make it stand out. And this looks a bit like a tuna, the fish. So each of these has a different you know, fish on it as well, and a myth. Creature in China's light folklore, and once again, the watermark is a lion. So, ten dollar bank now, you're probably paying, yeah, for this one, probably fifteen to twenty dollars. Uncirculated, obviously, you're paying much more. And you can see the feature in the background we have orchids, public housing, and we have a map of Singapore itself. Now, it does include some other islands that are not included on that. And then we have the fifty dollar. 
So these ones are not really so kept that much. In this condition, you're probably talking about sixty to eighty dollars. Obviously, it's a little bit damaged there. Still legal tender, but it has a, a coastal vessel. Then it looks like it has. I'm not too sure what that animal is. If anyone can tell me, that might be a leather jacket. Uh, on, but when you focus on this bank, no. You're going to look at the yellows and the reds here. So that's where the focal point is. Obviously the animals are facing that way. So they're facing towards a fishing vessel. And on the back we have the Benjamin Shearer's Bridge. I'm not sure if that's standing. Obviously it's a multi-span bridge. And it connects different parts of Singapore. It might even connect to Malaysia. That I need to look up. We have the dragon flying around, doing crazy stuff. Give me, give me your fucking money. Okay, and obviously this is printed by Thomas T. Laru. So, over $50. Uh, like the 100, 500, 1,000, 10,000. Obviously they're going to be harder to get. Uh, because uh, this being printed in the 70s and 80s. The current value now is probably a few hundred dollars in purchasing value. So really, if you're going to keep a banknote like this long term, uh, I don't recommend it. So the last series I have is the current one. And these ones I'll probably uh, just take to Singapore for a visit and I spend them. That's pretty much all they're worth is just face value. But the most interesting feature is we have the paper and the polymer banknote. As you can see, they kept the design pretty much similar, uh, except for the security window. So the paper banknote was first introduced in 1999, although they're not dated. Uh, they do have a feature on the background. Uh, it's usually underneath the actual indicator of the... Okay, here we go. Garden C, you've got this square... So I can't remember which date square is. This is probably an earlier version. Uh, so probably 90. Uh, in 2000 somewhere. Okay. So if I bring up. Okay. So what I'm going to look at is just a website. Okay. So this star is the second year. So probably. Oh, when was this issue? 2007. So probably 2008 issue. So, it's pretty sad that they don't actually issue a banknote that uh, has a date on it. Even if it's in the, in the actual serial numbers. But these banknotes have okay, Yusof bin Iskar. I think he was the first president of Singapore. Has a security feature. Which is the Lion Metallic uh, Printing. Uh, another security feature is lying down there. So that should actually line up the line in the back. So if it doesn't, then it's an error banknote. Or a fake. Okay, I like the back of these. Garden City. Uh, See-through is the actual coat of arms. But um, I reckon that they can probably put different people on the front of banknotes in Singapore. Obviously, there's more than just one person that made up Singapore. But anyway, it's got nothing to do with me. Uh, here's a better version. Still pretty much only face value. And yeah, this is the 2007 series. Has no print underneath. Quite nice. Then, okay, let's have a look at the paper and the polymer. So as you can see, they're pretty much the same. The... Major difference is just the windows. Uh, we have a. Oh, what is this? This is a. It's a security feature, more like a, a metallic security feature that reflects different uh, images. As you see in it. Then we have the metallic printing, which does reflect the light. As you can see there, it's actually quite good. And we have the raise image for the actual blind uh, but that's also on the polymer but i can't really feel it i, I mustn't have any feelings 
uh, too many years working in the oven on the, as, a, as a baker. And on the reverse, pretty much the same. So that's nice. And the last one we have is the current tender log, which is also a polymer. So they, I wouldn't be surprised in the future, Singapore did issue a $50 polymer banknote, but currently that's paper. Uh, sports, so there, this guy's playing soccer, tennis, running, yachting, and swimming. So, four sports that I just don't want to do. Anyway, it's quite nice. Uh, but his head, I actually like that colour. It's actually quite nice. It suits banknote quite nice. Um, but if you're going to get these type of banknotes uncirculated, yeah, probably if you pay more than double face value, uh, I'm probably not really worth uh, purchasing. Just save money, go for a visit to Singapore and see if you can get it for uh, face value. Anyway, I hope this helps you with your banknotes. Have an awesome coin and banknote collecting time. Thank you and goodbye.